shit. Oh, that's my favorite. I love Jason for that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, man. So, uh, welcome. It's been a while since it's been a Sunday that I have streamed. Uh, wow, it's probably been over a month i think i'd have to go back and look but yeah it's been about a month other than that i uh, want to thank tj for filling in as a co-host tonight uh paulie could not make it tonight uh he had some stuff he needs to take care of i'll let him explain when he gets back and uh our special guest tonight is go with the flow aquatics aka richard reynolds uh, i want to thank thank you guys for being up here on panel tonight i really appreciate it of uh, yeah, it's been a minute. Like I'm like don't know what the heck I'm supposed to be doing right now. But uh we'll get in, well we'll get this out of the way. Uh we got two super chats from Maria Z. One of them's a dollar ninety nine. She's gotta love Richard and Skipper. And oh my god, one for I one for Polly. She didn't know Polly wasn't gonna be here, but I know she loves you too, TJ. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you, Maria, for that. We'll get the hellos out of the way and get started here. First in was Eddie. Maria Z, thank you. Linda Worth, Shady Grady. Dave's Aquarium Thoughts, thank you for being here. Skulls Aquatics. We got Kalish. We got the George RB3. Uh, let's see. We got Paul McCartney. How are you? Uncle Smiley's Aquariums, how are you? Peplin Creek, hello. Homer the Clown Trigger, how are you doing? Oh, we got Merrick, Craig's Catfish Cave. It's morning there for him, but it's getting we're winding down on the East Coast. Mm, let's see here. About the time I say I'm at the bottom, I'm not. Hello, Andy Carson. Xanadu. Jeff Pelham. Thank you, buddy, for being here. Excuse me a second. And then it looks like... Uh... Kids got to love them. Oh, okay. I was just going to say that Craig uh, yes. gifted five memberships to the channel. Okay, we'll get to that. Yep. Uh, fishy hippie, elf, elf fish tanks. Oh yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Give five memberships. They went to Andy Carson, Maria Z, Craig's Catfish Cave, Jeff Pelham, and George RB3. Welcome. Thank you guys very much. And thank you, Craig, and welcome to the bottom dwellers. Fish fam dot links here. Cosman, it's been a while. Happy to see you. Stephen P. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. I think that's everybody. If I miss you, I apologize. And to the lurkers out there, and he just hit a button. He'll be back. To the lurkers out there, thank you all for listening and catching his stream. Whenever he gets back, we'll get with, uh, with him. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. Real quick, uh, he's back. I'm back. Sorry, <laughs> I hit him. Right. Right. I'm going to touch a little bit on this tonight, but Thursday night I'll talk more in depth on it. The NEC was a great event. Got to go to that a uh, couple weeks or last weekend. I yeah, think so. yeah, last weekend. Uh, I'm already thinking about next weekend, which I got to get to that too real quick. Uh, but anyways, the NEC was great. I uh, put some videos out, probably a couple. I got to work on some more of the fish that I brought home. Uh, and also, I'll talk. we'll talk more about that on Thursday night. Also, next Saturday, uh, on April 20th, is the first – Aquarist auction. So there's been some people that reached out to me. If there's anybody else that wants to sell plants, fish. <laughs> I knew she. Thank you, Maria. Appreciate it. I told you she did. 
Yeah, love you too, Maria. But uh, there's been a, there's been a few people that reached out. If there's some more that forgot when the date was, because I never did put nothing in community pace. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow because I'm gonna get down, get the nitty gritty worked on tomorrow with it. But uh, that's that. Yeah, I'll update you more on fish that I that I brought that brought home and then a funny story. It's it it blew my mind, but we'll talk about that next Thursday. I'll leave that with a cliffhanger. Well, so now we're gonna focus on Richard. Uh go with the flow aquatics. He came up with that about how long ago? It was a couple months ago he came up with the name. Yeah, something like that. Cynthia figured it out. Oh Cynthia, gotta love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, in the description, if one of the uh, mods would post his link, uh, the link's in the description. I'll put it up at the top. You want to go check that out? Subscribe. I'm telling you what, this man got some awesome fish. Maybe here later on we get into this, he could show us a couple tanks if he wants to. No pressure. But uh, holy cow, again. Can we get to this? But thank you, Big Steve, for gifting 20 memberships. We have, uh, let's see. Wow, Fishy Hippie, Homer the Clown Trigger, Paul McCartney, James H., Bunny Viper, Gina's Reefs, Chris Hawkwazone, Sandy Dowdy, Dee Dee's Finn Den, uh, Stephen White, uh, First Class Fish, Lady Diane, New Local Austin, Land Giraffe, Monster Fish Gal, Vincent, uh, Bipolar Fish Keeper, and it just jumped on me. Uh, Whips World, B Wizzle, Gen U, and I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Big Steve, and welcome everybody else to the memberships. So anyways, about a couple months ago, you brought that up. Thank you for putting that in there. I'm going to pin that to the top. Uh, thank you, Stephen P., for putting his... Uh, channel in there so people can go see it. Appreciate it. But anyways, you got you got quite a bit of fish. Just a few. <laughs> I mean, you got one guppy, you know, a couple corridors or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you, yeah. uh, so how many tanks do you have up and running? In the fish room, there's 63. In the house total, there's 82, 83, something like that now. Because Cynthia, wow. she's into the bettas. So we've, I've got, you know, I built a whole shelf system. She's got 12 five-gallon tanks with males in there. And then another, I don't know, three or four tanks throughout the house with more. And, uh, yeah, she's real into the bettas. And then we've got a 125, a 75, a 35 cube in the living room, that kind of stuff. Do you, you have any salt water? No, I had a reef tank for 10 years. And uh, years ago, when my girls were growing up, it was great. And when Hurricane Charlie hit, we lost power for eight days, and I lost everything. Mm. And I... Uh, I ended up, I got rid of the tank after that, got kind of discouraged, and I didn't have an aquarium going for about a year, year and a half after that. But then when I set it back up, I went back to fresh water like I'd done when I was younger. So now it's different. I have a whole house generator, so I don't worry about the hurricanes as much anymore. Plus, most all my tanks are plant, pretty heavily planted, that kind of thing. So if power cuts off for a day or two, it's not going to kill my fish. You know what I mean? They'll be fine. Yeah, you're good to go. That's that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not like uh, it's not like Lucas Brett or nothing. I have sponge filters and all of them and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Power went out for a while. Like when when uh, Ian hit and wiped everything out here, we lost our roof, but everything else was okay. And, you know, we couldn't get the generator going for about eight hours because the storm lasted that long before it, 
you know, calm down to where we could get the generator out, hook it up to the house. So, wow. but the people were all fine. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, that, that would definitely be a big setback. Yeah, well, I'm kind of lucky. I mean, when Ian hit, there was a 15-foot storm surge. It wiped out all of Fort Myers Beach, all of Sanibel, but I'm 20 miles inland, so I don't worry about the storm surge. For me, it's just the wind damage, you know? Right. And the biggest thing with Ian was it was such a slow storm. I mean, it we had 150 mile an hour winds for six hours before my roof started peeling off. You know, mm. it's, it was so slow. We had 150 mile an hour winds here for like nine hours straight. It was brutal. It was brutal. I couldn't imagine that. And then to keep fish on top of that, if you're not ready, like, you could lose everything. Oh, yeah. You could. You mm. could. I mean, there were people on the islands that stayed. A lot of them died. You know, 15-foot storm surge. They had no place to go. Yeah. You know? And it was sad, but there were a lot of people like stayed in their, their sailboats in the back bays and stayed in their homes. And then in the middle of the storm, some of them were like calling the radio, the television station saying, help me. And it's like, nobody can get to you right now. It's 150 yeah. miles an hour winds with a 15 foot storm surge. You're on your own. You know, I just, I don't understand these people that don't heed the warnings. Well, you got those people, and because of those people, you need other people. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> so, uh, how long have you been keeping fish? Well, I'm 57 now, so about 50, 51 here. Well, I say that. My first fish tank was a 10-gallon Metaframe when I was in kindergarten. What's that? six seven years old something like that yeah i was mm -hmm. the kid that when i was growing up we had dime, you know mccrory's dime stores and when you went in they had a restaurant area and they had a, a area that was just this wall of fish tanks and it had reptiles and fish and all that well when i was a kid my mom could go meet her friends for lunch and i could go look at all the fish and she could keep an eye on me kind of thing and so from the time i could talk i was pestering for a fish tank and uh my last day of kindergarten i come home and they had a 10 gallon fish tank with the usual some sword tails you know little neons that kind of stuff plastic plants and the colored gravel and the whole bit so that's, and then that's awesome by the time i was probably nine ten I was buying the little three gallon meta frames, you know, I'd save my money and buy the little three gallons and I had little turtles in there and crayfish. And, and then by the time I was in middle school, I was a kid that when somebody would throw a busted tank out, I'd collect it and then try to make like one good tank out of three or four. My dad taught me how to cut glass and snap it and all that. Oh, wow. So when I was in middle school, I had probably seven, eight tanks in my, in my room. And because we moved down to Florida when I was 12. And so it was a whole, whole my parents didn't let me bring any of my old tanks. because They were all these busted tanks fixed up and everything. And so when we moved down there, no, we're not shipping those. And so when I got down here, then I started collecting tanks again. Only it was just different fish. Like I found these cool catfish we were catching in this one creek. Well, I didn't know they were walking catfish. Put them in the tank. Next morning, wake up. No fish in the tank. They had all jumped out. We found them in the closet, under the bed. Oh, yep. my. Wow. So, yeah, That's we crazy. go catch a little baby flounder, little pipe fish, that kind of stuff in the river here. So that's why I started out in it. And then I've just always had tanks, even when the girls were growing up, that kind of stuff. Well, I always raised birds and, and fish. And, I mean, I wasn't into the breeding until the kids were grown and gone, and I had all this empty, the empty nest stuff, you know. Now I get yeah. to indulge in my hobby. 
So it seems like you're doing that very well. Yeah, well, the fish room is the second creation. First one was, you know, aquarium co-op with the the cinder blocks and the two by fours, you know. And then when I figured out I was really getting into this more, that's when I made custom racks and that kind of stuff so I could get more tanks in. And I did an automatic water change system and made it easier for me to take care of. Yeah. So, but I like oh, it. It keeps me out of trouble. Yeah, it definitely does whenever you're a kid. You get down to the creek or canal for you guys and catch stuff and then just see what you got. Um. If anybody has any questions for Richard while we're doing this, just put it in chat. I'll start, and then we'll get to it. Holy cow. There's all kinds of crap going on. We got brush fires right now because of the high wind. People think, oh, let's burn something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up, Dr. Awesome? Hey, Doc. Uh there is a quite. This is a general question for everybody. Uh, TK Tropicals has an empty fifty-five gallon tank for two years. We won't be able to use it till next year. Will it be okay? Well, I would leak test it. Mm -hmm. uh, depending upon where it was storage, that is going to affect the silicone the most. I would say that's just as long what as I think. Gosh. As long as it wasn't out in the sun, the sun will rot the silicone out quick. The UV from the sun. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'd just be careful and just leak test it for a good little while and just make sure there's nothing crazy with it. But other than that, it's probably going to be okay. Yeah, I would think. And worse comes to worse, you just cut out the old silicone and reseal it. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that, that hard. I mean, Richard, you were doing it at 10 years old, so... Yeah, okay, I'll be okay. I would, I would take. I remember the first tank I got had a busted end, so I the glass was all gone from it. So I got it home. I didn't know any better. I was a little kid. Dad had this like black tar stuff, you know, for waterproofing on the side of brick and that. Yeah. So I just put a piece of wood in there and black tar. <laughs> it worked. It worked. <laughs> it, it worked till. Uh, Dad came down in the basement and found out it was leaking a little bit. That didn't go over so well. But that's when he decided to teach me how to cut glass. I was, yep. probably, I was probably about 11 then, you hmm. know. He'd make me wear gloves and all that, but he showed me how to score it and snap it and that kind of stuff. You got a couple questions from Eddie. Uh, he wants to us to ask you about your breeding gifts pretty much your gift of breeding fish oh i was wondering where that question was going <laughs> yeah I don't... So, Ed, the thing is you got you got to interpret what eddie says fair i mean it's in all caps he's yelling so he's probably <laughs> going 50 miles an hour you know, to get so many words out that's right he's so excited out on the lanai good. skip yeah yeah yeah, I don't know if there's any gift to it. I just, like, my tanks are not squeaky clean. They all have mulm in them. They all have algae in them. To me, I mean, I, even the brackish water stuff when I first moved down here as a kid learning about, to me, I just try to mimic what I see out in the canals or in the creeks or the lakes, and, and things just aren't that clean. Mm. Like my Rashardis. If I totally clean that tank and make it spotless, they'll stop breeding. When there's mold buildup, they'll start breeding again. And I believe it's because that way they know their babies are going to have that infusaria to eat. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that. That's like, you know, I've got a lot of guppy breeds, guppy strains. And a lot of guys breed guppies at such sterile environments Mm -hmm. That when they get to somebody like my tanks, they're introduced to so many things that they just, they make it for a couple of weeks and they're gone, you know? And I just don't, I don't know. Personally, I just breed it different. I breed in the muck and stuff. That it mm -hmm. seems well, yeah. That's good. 
I've always wondered about that. And you and I talked about that before, and it kind of makes sense. You know, it's it's funny because you watch other videos where it's like crystal clear water, blah, 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 blah. And you look at other tanks. They seem to be doing really well. They got the mom at the bottom. They got little particles floating in the water. And it seemed like them fish are a lot happier to me just by observing. Uh, so I could see how that would work really well for, uh, uh, like, breeding fish. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like I saw a video today I was watching. I, I want to get some L46s. They're like my bucket list fish. And I've been holding off, but I've decided, okay, I'm going to get some. And I was watching a video. It was from somebody down in South America. It was all in Spanish, but they had the English subtitles for you. Mm -hmm. And they were diving down in the Zing River where the L46 has come from. And they were showing there was three different plecos, the L46 and two other L number plecos. I forget which ones they were, but they all were like breeding in these rock crevices together. And when you looked at the water, it wasn't crystal clear. Mm -mm. It was green water with a lot of mulm and muck, every, muck everywhere on this rock that they were all over. You know, it just, it, it wasn't sparkling clean. You know, there are fish that need that, but you know, there's a lot, I mean, I try to keep my water clean. I do have green water, but that's to feed moinia and, you know, pseudomagill fry and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I try to keep my water clean, but my, my tanks all have mulm and dirt. And yeah. Algae mm -hmm. And some of them have blackbeard in them. And, you know. Uh, well, Eduardo also wants to know who was the first hobbyist to see your fisher. I already know that answer. What? Eduardo. He wants to know who the first hobbyist was to see or fish her. That was Eduardo. He's trying mm -hmm. to rub that stuff in. Thank you, John, mm -hmm. for <laughs> becoming a YouTube member. And I'm telling you, he really he really must want something from you because he, he's really laying it on here. He <laughs> says he's very he's very happy to see you up here. He's in the he Lanai. Yes, yeah, I told you. But then he says that Cindy. It, that is the rock. Her choices of better babies is amazing, including her sorority. Yeah, she does have some nice bettas. What's the she's, got a, she's got a 40 tall with her sorority in it. She's got, I don't know, 20 something in there. I'm trying to remember what the L46 plec. Oh, the zebra plec. Zebras. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, man, yeah. dude. It, it's a. Uh, it's an investment because they're expensive as can be. But mm -hmm. besides that, they take two or three years to mature before they're breeding. Because when you're buying them that expensive, you're only buying them like inch and a half, two inch if you're lucky. And then it takes two or three years to get them to that size. And my understanding, they're not the easiest to tell male and female when they're young. So you got to hope you're getting males and females, you know. And I don't know. They're just a bucket list fish for me. So I've made the decision. I want to get 10 of them. So I'd like to get like five from one breeder and five from another kind of thing and get a colony going. So. I think, is that what Kirk has? Mm, Kirk, yeah. yeah. Kirk, fish him him Are his breeding? I don't know. Are they? Yeah, his breed. He don't. I I know he's he's had babies. Yes, I believe. He's also got the, I think the leopard leopard frogs. Oh man, maybe maybe it's backwards. Oh my gosh, can't think off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to phone a friend on that one. Uh, I'm trying to remember what what all Steph has. She's got she's got the L forty sixes, but hers she got from Dan this year, so she's got a ways to go before they're breeding. Okay. 
Yeah, she got hers when Dan got his in. There's a guy that was at uh, Aqua Expo in Coral Springs last year, and he'll be there, I'm sure, again this year. He's a breeder somewhere here in Florida, and he had the L46s. And at one point, if you'd buy five or more, he'd drop them to a hundred bucks, which is a phenomenal price. Because like Dan's are two thirty six, I think. Mm, there yeah. are my guys that I've seen on like Aqua bid and that they're in the two hundred range. Yeah. So, hey Jenny Lynn. Yeah, so that's... we'll see. But I may get some from him. Uh, Skull sent a thing out. To people who were on his mm -hmm. channel with that other guy and I noticed he had the L46 listed and I to be honest I don't know if I'm better off getting wilds or aquarium bread you know what I mean if I get wilds mm -hmm. then I'll probably have to medicate them because the odds are they'll come in with parasites mm -hmm. and I hate medicating but uh, another guy Cebu Cebu of Sabor Aquatics. Uh, he was up the NEC and he had them, and they were for about I think the same price. He ships also, the same, mm -hmm. and he's a good guy. Mm. So I like that. Okay, I have to remember that. He'll be at the Clash, Richard. I won't be able to make it this year. Oh no. Yeah, the only thing we're going to be able to go to this year, we're going to go to the ALA, and the, mm -hmm. it's the ALA, the Killifish, and the Betta Fish Convention, because that's in Tampa this year, so that's only two hours for us. Yep. And then we always go to the Aqua Expo at Coral Springs on the East Coast. That's only two hours for us. Yep. And the Aqua Expo, I just, I really enjoy it. That's where I met Corey and Dean and Zenzo, because the one year they had it in conjunction with the ALA over there. And uh, that was the year I met Corey and all of them over there. But it's a really cool expo to go to because a lot of the fish farms down in Southern Florida go and display stuff there, new lines they're working on, that kind of stuff. And that's the only show they go to all year. Oh, that's interesting. You know, a lot of, like they'll come up and set up these 300 gallon ponds with new strains of guppies or new strains of, of wow. they've got that kind of stuff, you know, so you never know what you'll see there. That's why I enjoy it. And then there's two of the big plant distributors, plant farms down there that they'll come in with all kinds of plants. And I mean, we were buying Anubias for like two bucks a piece, big ones, you know, because they come and sell a lot of that stuff wholesale to the public at those shows. Mm hmm. And when oh, yeah. you said what what shows that? Sorry, my pager went off, so I had to mute. It's the Aqua Expo in okay. Coral Springs, Florida. They have it every October. It keeps Ooh, getting a, bigger and bigger. It used and that's to be a nice time to be in Florida. Huh? It's a nice time to yeah, also be it, in Florida. It really is. <laughs> it really is. And usually at the Aqua Expo, they didn't do it this year, but normally they do some like collection trips if people want to do it the day before that, but they didn't do it this year. I don't know why. Hmm. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Mark, I think I don't understand. I don't know what he's talking about because I got distracted. Uh, he a lot of whole batch of babies from one spawn. Hmm. Where are we talking about plecos? Yes. Yeah. Talking about plecos. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know too much about about those. I just got the L three ninety sevens. I've got a lot of bristle nose, but bristle nose. I don't know. It doesn't seem to. I've never had it where it was all females or all males with my bristle nose. I'm, now I've had that with my guppies. And I think a lot of that is temperature. Oh, you've had uh, groups of, of guppy babies and they were all born one one gender? Yeah. If you get guppies, not all guppy strains, not all strains are like that. But some mm -hmm. of the more purebred strains seem to be, if it's cooler temp, you'll get a ton of females and very few males. 
if it's really warm temps, say 77 or above, you'll get a lot of males and few females. Oh, that's interesting. I've got probably 16, 17 different strains of guppies. And I'd say there's probably four or five that are that way. The rest of them, it doesn't seem to matter temperature or anything. Yep. But there's a few that if the temperature's high, you'll get more males. If the temperature is low, you'll get almost all females. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, isn't it? It, it is. Yeah, that's amazing. I figure it's all got to do with genetics somewhere in the lineage. You know, like the angels I was breeding, you know, I, I crossed the California green veil with a Peruvian, just a silver tiger angel. Mm -hmm. And I got babies that were, had the green and had the veil tail like the California green veils, but they didn't have as much of the black on them. They were more silver. So you saw more of that green. So I thought, okay, that's cool. Well, then when I bred two of the babies, a brother and sister, guess what? I got orange top, white orange tops. I got platinums. I got green veils. I got silver tigers. I got all of it because when you're line breeding like that, you can throw back 20 generations. You just never oh, know. Yeah. So, you know, oh. I've got one spawn. Here, I'll show you real quick. There's one that's all of these angels. Can you guys see? Yeah. Go to your all the angels, yeah. all the different types. That was all one spawn. Mm-hmm. Wow. Actually, actually, that's half of one spawn. The other spawn's in another tank. But, but yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, I used to breed fancy pigeons, and it was that way. When you start breeding brother and sister, you'll get throwbacks. You know, the proper thing to do is to take sister and breed it back to dad, brother breed it back to mom, and you'll get more of a truer line genetically. Mm -hmm. But if you breed it the other way, you know, you may get some true lines, and you may get throwbacks for X amount of generations. You just never know. Oh, wow. That's like that little red uh, guppy. You've seen a picture of it. I got the Japanese, the yellow blue double tails from Kenny at, at Daniken, and they bred hundreds for me. And all of a sudden, it pops out a solid red male. And so I kept him out, and I put him with two virgin females from the same, you know, litter or whatever, same spawn. And we'll see. They're both pregnant, so we'll see if we start getting any reds out of it. That, that'd be awesome. But, you know, that red, when I call Kenny, I'm like, have you ever had, have you ever gotten a red like that? And he's like, no, I never have. And I got, I probably had a hundred babies by that point before it threw that red. So you just don't know how many generations back that came from, mm -hmm. you know. It's amazing to see what it took to get to the current strains of some of those fish. And, and all that's kind of in the genetic line of that. And I just, yeah. it's crazy. I think that's why I like the guppies so much. Mm -hmm. I love the genetics. You know, when I bred birds, well, I still have Australian finches, but when I was really into breeding like pigeons and some of the Australian finches, the color strains, you learn a lot about genetics doing that, you know, in the color mm -hmm. more. Yeah, and you've put some videos out of amazing strains of guppies that you have. I've got one blue line that I've been working on for about three years. It started from a line of multis. I bought two, uh, two triples of these multis, and they were imports when I bought them. I got them home, and within three days, all, all six of the fish were dead like a lot of the imports do, right? Yep. However, they had one one of the females drop fry, and it gave me 10 fry. And out of that fry, because I had two different kinds of multis, and 
I take that. I take that back. Two of the females drop fry. One drop like eight or ten of them. One drop two. And from that, I was able to breed the two lines and keep them going. And I've been working on it for about two, two and a half years now. And it's they have this like bright neon color. And I'm trying to breed some of the other multicolors out of the fins and get a more solid blue. But their colors come along like you look at them from the top now, they look almost neon. So they're hmm. coming along. Yep. Nice. But I'm probably 10, 15 generations into them, you know, getting them there. And that's picking out virgin females to do that, right? Or, right. Or you, always, you always take your best males and you put them with a virgin female because once a male mates with a female, she can hold on to that sperm for up to a month. And you can have, that's mm -hmm. why you can have a, a female who's in a tank with different males. And if she has a spawn, she could have 10 different kind of babies. You know what I mean? Depends on yeah. how much, how many different sets of sperm she's still holding on to. So I, I have, always pull the fee, to pull the male and put him with a virgin female just for that reason. I remember, you know, hearing about that the thirty they could hold sperm, but then I had three different droppings, three different spawns from one female after the male was passed away. Uh huh. Yeah, it's crazy. They, just, they hold on to it. Well, that's like the live bear from Mexico. It's a molly. Ed was, I know Ed Chattanooga, Ed's been wanting some. And they're females, okay? Oh, and, yeah. they, and they have to breed with another male from a different genus of Molly. But then all the babies come out genetically females. They, they don't keep any of the male DNA. That's the weirdest thing to me. It's wow. the Amazon Mollies. I remember him talking about that. Amazon, that's it. Amazon mollies. Yeah. Other, they, they're only females, TJ. All of them are females. None of them ever become males and they have to breed with other molly, other live bear males to get the sperm or whatever. However, none of the genetics. They don't the pick it up from the male at all. Yeah. Wow. None of the genetics carry. Now how that works, I don't know. Yeah, everybody's saying Amazon Molly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's These are the times where I just say nature is so fascinating. It, oh, it dude. really is, man. That, and that's just how they stay that same look the whole mm -hmm. way through. Uh -huh. But what's weird is, you know, look at the crayfish that can mutate and they just clone themselves. Yeah. yeah. These guys... They're cloning themselves, but they still need sperm from another genetics to do it. It's just yeah. crazy they just, to me. They just need that, what, that chromosome to get it going. Uh-huh. That's yeah. it. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, I'm, I remember talking about that, and I'm glad you brought that up because that is a pretty neat thing. Mm -hmm. Curtis yeah, said he's going to have some soon. It's the only fish I know of that's like that. You know, Mother Nature is, that's like most people don't realize pigeons are the only birds left on the planet that man cannot raise the babies by themselves. Yep. The pigeons have to be raised by the parents because the parents still have milk glands under their breastplate. And for the first two weeks of their life, that's what the babies live on is that milk that they secrete. And we can't replicate it. Did not know that. that. No, I had no idea. <laughs> the last, the last bird on yep. this planet that did that, besides pigeons, was the dodo bird that's now extinct. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So Richard, is that like, is that pigeons that live in like some of the cities and stuff like that too? All pigeons. All pigeons. All pigeons. All pigeons. There's two hundred and something different strains all originate from the original rock dove from Britain. The rock dove from Britain. Okay. Yeah. Now thousands of years ago, but yeah. you know, genetics. Yeah. They trace it all back to that, but yeah, pigeons are the only bird left on the planet that, you know, if you get a bird and you raise it and hand feed it, mm -hmm. 
for the first two weeks of his life, you can't do that with a pigeon. Now, after two weeks, you can. Mm. So it's mm. something that they need. They got to have it. it, it they got to have it. That, that it's, they call it a milk. It's more like an oil and gland secretion, but it's got all kinds of probiotics and vitamins and all these nutrients that man hasn't figured out how to replicate yet. Hmm. Well, I'm holy cow. I missed a bunch of people coming in. Uh, people I didn't say hi to. Hello. Uh, I noticed there's quite a few that came in silver Creek, Jason, uh, first class fish. Oh man. There's been a bunch of you. We really appreciate you showing up. Uh, I knew this question was going to come up. That's why I wasn't going to ask it. I wanted them to ask it. <laughs> I think I know well, the question you're going to ask. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up sometime. They want to know, how do us rookie fish keepers get any of those fish? Are they for sale? I knew that was coming. I knew it. Well, my CPDs and my emerald rasboros, uh, some of the pseudomagills, Grant and Shelby at Garden of Eater have been selling them. I've been selling to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and most the rest of them I just sell locally. I... I don't have a problem shipping fish, but as Skipper knows, when Jason bought the Ivan Safi uh, uh, pseudomagills on off of the the auction, I try. I told everybody, ah, twenty five bucks for shipping, right? Yeah, it was one hundred and seventeen dollars to ship to him. Oh boy! Because I'm so far south in Florida, for next day air they cream you, mm -hmm. and it, most people at it doesn't pay for for me to ship to them you know i mean i don't have a problem shipping as long as they don't mind paying heavy shipping you know yeah it's just a little hefty it is and it then is. you and i have actually ran into some issues with the shipping companies and got your money back but that's besides the point and we were very fortunate yeah. that the fish survived well, yeah, the first batch I sent out on Monday, and you got them, what, Saturday? That first yeah. batch of the Corys, and luckily, they all made it. And then the other one I shipped out on Monday, and you got when? Friday? Thursday or Friday? Yeah, and it was, and it was next day. It was supposed to be here Wednesday. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I went up to the, it was the post office. I went up and I talked to him. I said, what is going on? She goes, I don't know. This has been happening a lot with uh, that next day air because you're paying. We'll say it was a hundred bucks, right? You pay a hundred bucks to send that out, and that that next day air, if it's it, it's the expedited next day air, isn't it? There, there's a difference, but anyways, whatever the difference was, they are supposed. It is supposed to be at your house no matter what the day that they say it is. It by 9 p.m. If it is not at their house, I would say that Wednesday. Yeah, it it goes it goes that Thursday. You get it the next day. You let that shipper know they go to the post office and they got to give them a refund. Yeah, I mean, they both times, Skipper, you know, I got the money back for the shipping. I'm just glad the fish made it. At least I've yeah. got healthy fish. But <laughs> It was just weird. It was so, so weird. I don't get it. The one that really worried me was the uh, Kanakis the first time because that's when it was really cold up there. Mm -hmm. And I had put a 72-hour heat pack in, but the 72 hours passed up a long time ago, you know. And you got them, and they were what? 50-something degrees, it was but cold. they all made it. Yeah, know? I heard. I didn't even do a video. I put them right in water to float to start getting them, and they all did good. It, it, it was, wow. Uh, that amazed me. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, if like you said, if you're willing to pay the shipping, you see something in his videos he likes. I mean, you could probably reach out to him and go from there, but I'm telling you, for, I don't get it. For, and you know what? Honestly, from the West Coast, it's pretty expensive, too, to come to the East Coast now. Mm. So it's just shipping went up. So yep. that's one of the things that's going to have to be talked about next Saturday is shipping. 
But you got to understand, that's just how it is nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did see a question. Forgot to start. But if – there it is. Peplin has a question. What's new breeding projects that you are doing you're most excited about? Uh, probably the green lasers and the gold lasers breeding now. Because the green lasers, I've had them, what, almost two years now. They're the ones I got from Dr. Anthony, brought back from the Amazon. Yeah. Uh, so it took a while for them. And my black Schultz eyes, I got those at the Triple Crown. Still haven't gotten not one spawn from them. All my other quarries are spawning, but nothing with them. You know, so I found with them, if you have a way to get black worms, feed them that. Or if you had well, to, get worms. I'm going to make a video. I put a little short out of a couple of bins. Well, you know it because you tried to guess what it was. I didn't try. I guessed it. Yeah, it only took four tries, but I, mean, I figured it out before <laughs> everyone else. even before. Mr. Eduardo that lives close to you. I figured it yeah. out. But uh yeah, I want to I haven't made them yet cuz I want to video it. Try to put out some longer video cuz all I've been putting out is like 1 minute shorts just kind of hey, I got fry over here or this is spawning here and that kind of stuff, you know. I'm still learning all this. Um but yeah, I got an idea and actually Greg What's his name? He's got a really cool channel. Greg. It's Greg Jones, Greg Sage. I think it's Greg Jones. He was at the Clash. Yes. And he made, yeah. I years ago, well, a couple of years ago, I had black worms going in one of my aquariums. And they always say you can't do black worms in sand, right? It's too tight for them. Well, that's where they ended up. And it was, I had fed black worms and my pea puppers in there. Well, the pea puppers bit them and chumped them up. So what happened? The pieces grew new worms. And before you knew it, I had them breeding like crazy in that sand. And I screwed up after I got rid of the pea puppers, I screwed up and I wasn't harvesting. And it got so many in there. And then at one point it just crashed. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at new ways I want to do culture black worms and I saw Greg he did a video on using these ice tables have you ever seen those they're four foot by eight foot tables that have a drain in the center where you put food and stuff and you put ice on it you know what I mean mm -hmm. and he put one out on that well I don't have four foot by eight foot left in my fish room to do that and so I bought well, I bought these trays. Mm -hmm. They're like uh, the hard acrylic plastic trays, like they have for food concession and stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to drill them and use these tubes, put two tubes in, just one with an air stone for an air lift for the water in, and one for the overflow out. And these are the perfect size that they fit on a 40 breeder. Oh, yeah. So I use the 40, so nice. I use the 40 breeder as a sump. And then I bought just a little bit of acrylic plastic to cut and put on each side so that it can't slide off of the 40 breeder. Mm -hmm. And then you can slide it from end to end if you need to get the fish or whatever. That's my thought behind it. Like I said, I don't have a four by eight foot space like he did because what he did works really well with a constant flow for the black worms. But I just am going to try to scale it down to a smaller size. Mm -hmm. And then when I do it, I want to put sand in one and then like, I don't know, maybe lava rock or something in the other, try different substrates and see which works better, you know? Uh I've got two 40 breeders at the bottom of a rack, so I can put one on each. That'd be neat to see. I can't wait. 
First class fish wants to know where he sourced them, got them trays from. Because uh, uh, the ones that he gets, they, they're pretty pricey. Or ones that they were looking for are pretty pricey. These here, we bought two of them. I want to say shipping and everything, it was like, turned out almost 40 bucks. So they're like 20 bucks a piece after shipping and everything. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. But now they're only, they're only four inch tall. Because you don't need a lot for the black worms. No, did you get them off Amazon or something? It was uh, it was an internet site like Internet Kitchens or Internet Kitchen Equipment or Internet Chef, something like that. It was one of those internet places you can buy like anything you need for restaurant stuff. Okay. I'd have to ask her. Well, she is my executive assistant. She does hmm. all that. She's the head of purchasing. That's it. Yep. Yeah. She's pretty well everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's working, Richard. Don't mess with it. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's an awesome lady. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, want to know the best place to source black worms from? Good luck. Uh, it's hard to get them on the internet. I've I've been looking. Yeah, I have too. Uh, have, uh, there's a California black worm company out of California I've heard is a pretty decent source but they're pricier so oh heck dropping the ball Susie Q if you're up next let me know because I did not tell anybody yet and you are so in a roughly seven minutes Q Aquatics is up next so we will get that link in the uh the old uh, chat, chat there, what you might call it, and then you guys go on over there after here. She said she is going to be up. And then I think we have a Tennessee Fish Mafia tonight with Scruffy City. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good one. Yeah, I haven't seen Mitch in forever. Yeah. So I know, I know. Like for me, you were saying. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You were saying about. Uh, say that again, California black worms? Yeah, there's a California black worm company in California. Yeah. And they say that they're good to get from, but I, I don't know. I've never ordered black worms through the mail. We had a local fish store here, a small one. There's a young kid, and he was, I really loved his shop, and he carried black worms. He'd order them in every week. So he had fresh black worms and he ended up closing down his shop, him and a friend. They're doing the uh, growing frags in a big warehouse environment. Now they got an investor and they went that route. So okay. he doesn't, he was the only, we've got four decent, decent local fish stores here. None of them carry black worms. One carries brine shrimp, but that's it. Well, I know, like, I don't know where uh, that fi that fish place, that pet place here in Pennsylvania gets them, but they get them. Uh, but uh, I, there's actually, if you if you know somebody in your, if you got clubs or anything, you'd be surprised. There's a, some people do it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. That that's a hard one to get because it. I think it was a couple years ago. It was hard to get them mm -hmm. at all. Like mm -hmm. it was really hard to get them. Well, I'm, I figure when I do this little experiment thing, when I get black worms, I'm going to literally pick through them one by one because I don't want any leeches and no planaria in my cultures. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing that I've ever dealt with. Get Even when you know he got them at his local fish store, he tried his best. But when you're buying them two or three pounds at a time, you're going to get leeches and planaria in with them. But I figure when I start my culture, I want to keep try to keep it pure. I still got my big morning of culture outside, my 75 gallon. This smart guy coming in with a scientific name for black worms. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I still don't know how to speak that kind of language. No, <laughs> not at all.
No, I Cosman think, said. I think he mentioned. Cosman mentioned that to me before. I forgot to... about that. It's on. They have a website, I believe. I have to look that up. Oh, he, yeah, he says his source, he thinks their source is California black worms. I've heard they're good to get from, but I've, I've been told you got to buy them pretty decent size quantity. Well, yeah, California black, I went to their website and it was like pounds. Yeah. So imagine the amount of worms that would have been. In a pound? Oh, my there'd God. Be a lot. There would be a lot in a pound. I ain't mistaken. I think it was like a five pound minimum. I'm like, no, I'm good. Ah, <laughs> uh, Fishy Mons here. He's rapping. He must be uh, doing a short looking out his window. <laughs> 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 I love those things. They're great. Uh, we're definitely going to have to get you back up here again. We only got three minutes left. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. I've had a good time. And it went quick. It did go quick. And if anybody here who watches it either now or later hasn't taken the time or hasn't found Richard, you need to do it. He's putting out some really interesting shorts, and it sounds like he's got some other stuff in store. And just the sheer variety of things that he keeps between shrimp and fish and all kinds of other stuff, uh, I really enjoy when I see a new video pop up then I think all of you guys would as well. So, uh, you know, take the time to do that after the stream here. I appreciate that. Uh, yep. The link, the links at the top and it's also in the description, Susie. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and wind this down so everybody can get over there if they need to get a drink and stuff. We will get you back up here. Maybe we'll do a, a fish uh, a tour of some of your fish tanks. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We can do that. Easy peasy. I'm going to go with the flow kind of guy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Get her done. That's when Cynthia came up. We were trying to figure out names to call it. And she was like, yeah, look, you're just a go with the flow guy. What about go with the flow? And I'm like, that works for me. Perfect. Yeah. And then she came up with the logo. and Yeah. That's, that's great. You getting stickers made yet? Yep, we got them in this week. Ooh, all right, Thanks. all right, all right, everybody. I want to thank everybody in chat for participating. The super chats, the uh, gifted memberships, uh, lurkers, mods for doing what you do. I really appreciate it. Uh, TJ, thank you for coming up here. Is the co-host tonight? Yeah, thanks and for having Richard me. Richard for being the guest. Do you guys thanks have anything to that. say? No, yeah, just had a good time. I would know just that I had a good time. Thanks for uh, the opportunity, Richard. It was great to get a chance to, to chat with you again. It feels like the clash was a long time ago. Yeah, it, it was. You yeah. know, it, it sucks. I really wanted to be able to just if nothing else to see everybody again, yep. you know? Yep. So that's it. I'm on a quest now. Okay. 2025. Okay. Aqua Expo Coral Springs. That's the place for fish fam to be. It may happen. Huh. It's October, Skip. I, that sounds real nice. Florida in October. October it in Florida. It's a nice motel, and it's not a it's not an overly expensive event. Like the rooms aren't four or five hundred dollar rooms, kind of thing, you know. But yeah, um, this for everybody to come down. October 2025. 25. More than a year to plan. Okay. There you uh, go. Eduardo is trying to pay me to bite him. Hmm. <laughs> thank you, Eduardo, for the $50 super chat. You're awesome as always. And actually, thank you for introducing me to Richard Reynolds. <laughs> He's one of God him in my radar. Thank you very much, bud. I truly do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we had fun at the class last year, huh, Skipper? Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye. Next week.